It has been over a year since I last talked about my iPad Pro 12.9 inch and it's been some time so it's now we're ready for an update. I want to give y'all an update on if it's still worth it after all of this time. What are the things that I still use on a daily basis? What are some things that I cannot live without? And what are some things that I thought I would use more of but end up not really using initially? And just overall what are, what are my thoughts? Is it still worth it. For those who want to get my initial thought when I first got this about years ago's review, I'll keep that in the link in the, link in the description if you want to check that out. But let's get into it. This baby right here, 12.9 inch. Is it still worth it? Is it not worth it? So first things first, some of the things that I still use this baby a lot. In fact, I'm using it like right now as I look through my notes. First thing is that this is my daily driver when it comes to creative process starting any type of project and idea I feel like this is my go-to in writing down all my ideas my thoughts it's one of those where now I'm so tied with my iPad like I feel crippled without it like when I need to start any type of project at work personal just getting my life together I need to start here. I need to jog down all my stuff. Start from like to-do list. What am I gonna do today? What am I gonna focus on today? Prioritizing that list and then figuring out how I'm actually gonna going to complete the task. I draw it all out. I draw it all out in the iPad and I love that it is this big whiteboard that you're able to just draw anything, write down anything you need and it is fantastic. Pen and paper, yes, it will have the same effect and I will tell you that when I am at work, for example, like physically in the office and I forgot to bring in my iPad, I do need to scramble to look for a pen and paper to help me jog down these ideas and maybe I just become so custom and used to the iPad, it just doesn't feel different. And notebooks and physical papers and pen is not as convenient because like once you like put it somewhere, you forgot it or you like need to erase something, like that's actually a big one when you like need to erase something or rearrange the positioning or the ordering of the notes and ideas that you just wrote down. It's not convenient. You have to like scratch it out or redraw the whole thing versus in the iPad, you're able to, you know, circle what you just wrote, push it down in the position that you want to add more notes, to give you more room to add more notes, right? In, in the ideas that, that you have for a particular topic or section that you have. That is like the beauty of iPad that you cannot get from pen and paper. Yes, it's more affordable, right? It's more accessible. I totally get that. And that would be my go-to option when I don't have any other way because my brain is just so now at this point custom to being able to write things down and draw out my my thoughts and ideas and thinking process so I'm super reliant on that but iPad when you have it it just feels you could do anything like that's actually how I feel with the iPad like legitimately every single project every single to-do list almost like every day basically I have a to-do list I rely on my iPad so I touch this thing every day and that's like the number one thing I would say I use it for is for me to plan my day out, get my life together, structure my work day. That's very important. I start here almost there's like folders and folders of almost like daily to-do lists that I have on my iPad and I just write down things. What am I supposed to do? Prioritize it. And then once I have that prioritized, a lot of the work that I need to do is not really just about doing it. I still still need to plan and think about how I'm actually going to do it. For example, I need to create a lot of decks to communicate my plan and my idea and what I have done. And in order to do that in a way that capture your audience and really you're clear on your message, I need to be very concise, right? In every single slide that I have. So being able to draw it out, write it down, really think through what are the key points that I want to communicate and then add my thoughts and my notes to it in the iPad, super flexible again, being able to move things around, structure, erase, all of that stuff, just make that process so much easier. And that is my holy grail. I always do that whenever I need to put together anything or even like do a presentation. I jog down my key points that I want to get across to the people that I'm presenting to and then really go from there. So I cannot go without this baby. This is where like the biggest attachment that I have with my iPad is like it really helped me organize and structure my life and my ideas and my planning and turn that into real life. 
Um, the second thing that I very much use this iPad for on a daily basis is, is my baby when I go to sleep. <laughs> Here's what I mean. I used to use my laptop, my old MacBook uh, laptop to go to sleep. I'm one of those gal where I need to hear sound when I go to sleep. When I'm talking about sound, I'm talking about white noise. Yes, I have a white noise machine, my humidifier that I turn on every night just so there's some white noise in the background. I also put on YouTube every night. Like, doesn't matter what I'm watching. I just need some noise in the background. I turn the volume super low though, so it's not really loud or anything, but I do have that running like all night. And I used to use my older laptop for that. And you, it, for those that who have older MacBooks and laptop, like, you know what I mean is that that thing gets heated up quick. And I'm, you know, M1 and Ford, I think that is much better. Like, it doesn't heat up as bad as the previous version version of MacBook, but I got the older ones in the past and I would leave it on my bed and you know your bed, like I have nothing underneath it usually. So it's like my pillow, my mattress, and that thing just adds another layer of heat to your already heated up laptop. So it just didn't feel healthy to be honest. There's probably like really bad radiation or something that it's like heating up a little heater basically next to my bed when I watch that to sleep. So I transitioned that into using my iPad to do that. And I still use this thing that I bought from Ikea, which is like a little stand that I put for my iPad. And I still do, like I still put this thing like this and just like leave it next to my pillow. Not my pillow directly, but like next to basically me laying next to my pillow and, and I just leave it on all night. And usually better battery life on this thing is pretty good. Usually like I have this fully charged when I wake up. So I have a hundred percent, not when I wake up, I actually charge it when I wake up because this battery do get drained over the night because I do watch YouTube the entire night, right? I just leave this thing on. So usually when I woke up, it's already in the red, like 20%. And I charge it as I'm getting ready for the day. By the time I'm done getting ready, usually it's like almost fully charged and you're good. Like usually by the time I go to bed, I have about maybe 60 or 70%. You know, it depends on how heavy I used it in the day. Cause usually if you're just using notes and things like that, it doesn't drain too much battery, but yeah. And then usually about 70, 65% ish, it gets you through the night and it's fine. By the time I'm fully asleep, <laughs> you know, around like 3 a.m. and onwards, I'm fine. Like if this thing turns off or it stops playing, I'm okay. But I do use it every night as a way to watch YouTube or movies, turn on a movie when I go to bed, just so it helped me sleep much better. And this has been much better option to put next to your bed because it doesn't heat up like my old laptop. And it's so convenient, you know, just super convenient. And it also take less room than my previous laptop that I used to use um, to fall asleep with. The third thing that I still use this little baby, not little, but like, super, I call it all because to me, I still don't use a cover by the way. Yes, it's been over a year and I still do not use a cover on this thing just because it just really helps like the 12.9 inch to still feel very light and convenient and I love it. And look, here's the thing though, whenever I do hold this thing, even around the house or especially when I bring it into the office, I hold this with my dear life. You know, whenever I'm like walking anywhere with this thing, I make sure that I'm like, like securing it with my life just so you know I'm very conscious and mindful when I'm carrying this thing so I don't drop it so knock on something I don't have wood near me but like that I, I, I still have not actually dropped this on a hard surface and but yet yes I have dropped this from my bed thank goodness I have carpet because like this whole thing drops sometimes like sometimes it hits my chair near my bed and I, I freak out every time I pick this up after it fell I'm like oh crap like is the screen cracked what's happening luckily nothing has cracked maybe it does have like little scratches here and there but it's not noticeable but don't be like me if you do have it and you don't mind a little bit of a weight to your iPad to secure it and with a cover do it for me I just really really like how light it is without a cover for a 12.9 inch so I kind of live without putting that
putting that on. Uh, but that's just me. But I recommend you to put a cover on. So, okay, the third thing that I still use this baby for every day is for entertainment. iPad is super great for entertainment. And the entertainment that I do mostly on this thing is things like shopping. So for example, I just moved into my new place. So I've been trying to buy furniture, decor, things for the home. And I enjoy shopping on my iPad. I just go on the website, browse a bunch of things. You know, I just think this is so much easier to do shopping on than on my phone. I'm talking about like heavy shopping too. Like when you know you have to spend a good amount of time to find the, the, the dining table that you like, the chairs, the, you know, bunch of things like you actually spending a good amount of time. I think shopping the iPad just makes the experience experience so much better than a laptop or like your phone, for example. Like your phone's just a little bit too small to do like continuous scroll. I do use my phone though to shop on Amazon just because there's a lot of things sometimes that just pop up in my head. I'm like, okay, let me search for this save, look at the price, things like that. Laptop is good. I think when I'm like ready to make big purchases on certain things. So like usually I don't purchase a lot of things, meaning like big bundle of items. Like if it's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of things, I try to really make sure all of the information I enter is like correct. I look through everything, check through everything. So like there's a little bit extra of that process that I usually do on my laptop instead of on my iPad. But on my iPad, this is where I like narrow all of the items down or make smaller purchases. If it's like just small purchases, like few items here and there, I do make them direct on my iPad because it's super convenient and I have it within my fingertips. So that's what I do. But the other entertainment that I do on the iPad, watching videos, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, those are just the subscription that I use. And I constantly do do that on my iPad while I'm like on my phone using TikTok or, you know, on my laptop doing a heavier work. And I'll just have this open next to me, like an extra screen to play videos and things like that while I'm sometimes even taking notes. The other type of things I like to love to do on my iPad and that's just my personal entertainment is Pinterest. You know, you, you're going to go to Pinterest University to really shop like furnitures and things like that, even though I'm not even close to getting like, I always get this when I when I try to copy a Pinterest post and I end up not being able to achieve the look for some reason. But you know, but I love going on Pinterest, looking at like recipes, just food ideas and furnitures, decor, like things like that. And I do spend a lot of time on Pinterest. So I do do that religiously on my phone if I'm laying down or on the go. But I do do that a lot on my iPad too for like just an endless scroll on things. So that's the type of entertainment I always, I I also do. I mean, on, on top of that, I do make smaller errands, just like how I do shop and purchase things on the iPad if the items are not too like crazy or the prices are not too crazy. I also do like pay my bills, for example, through my iPad too. So like when I need to pay my electricity bill or make sure that I remember to pay some other bills, I go log into those websites to check and things like that. I do use my iPad for that. And those are the kind of the errands that I also find very convenient to, to be able to do without hopping into your laptop necessarily. So I do do those as well as shopping on Amazon and everything else. Fourth, but the, here's the last thing I would say, these are like the top four things that I do a lot on still daily on my iPad. The fourth one is I still use this heavily as a whiteboard when I'm working. With the new work from home hybrid type of culture, I'm hybrid. So like I do have days where I go into the office and I have days where I work from home and either or though now everyone is just so used to doing meetings virtually. And when you like, even when I'm in the office, not all my colleagues are in person. I'm still doing video conference with someone in another office. And with that, you lack that whiteboard, just like drawing things out experience. And I still heavily use my iPad connected with my USB-C to my my MacBook, for example, and I'll share my screen and I'll sit and I'll show them, you know, I use my like laser pen and I'll just like show them exactly like, hey, here's what I mean.
clean walk them through but like show them along with walking them through like what are you what do you mean by this example and that like hit home every time because I'm in marketing but there are definitely a lot of instances where like I'm trying to explain a use case uh, an experience or something like how certain things go from one thing to another how how something impact another thing and when you're just using words the entire time especially when you're just brainstorming right because like it's another thing to like create a nice deck and have everything draw out but when you're just brainstorming you want to also make sure that your message is coming off clearly and being able to draw that in an ipad like connect it to your laptop share your screen and actually show them what you're talking about like being able to use your pen as a way to almost you know point out like here's what i mean this starts here and then it goes there and this is like you know all how everything kind of adds up together it has helped a lot and i will tell you like every time i have used my ipad as a whiteboard almost all my colleagues will ask me like oh my god that is so cool like what are you using like they find it super fantastic and fascinating that people could use tools like that to communicate better and i would just tell them like hey i'm just using my ipad basically these are the apps you know for example that i'm using to show notes and draw and use the laser pen and all of that but pretty much it's like the ipad right it's like the ability of just how easy it is and how seamless it is to connect to your laptop with it so that is still something that i use religiously and i could only imagine this maybe in the future becoming the standard i just feel like at one point <laughs> it, especially if your work and your company uses virtual video conference religiously and there's a lot of like brainstorming and ideas that needs to go about like if you're basically a, someone and within the team that could really leverage whiteboarding drawing things out to discuss topics and ideas i feel like everyone company should just start giving out ipads <laughs> <laughs> to their employee as like equipment just like how they give us laptop you know most of the times in tech in in work because it's just so so valuable i feel like it just adds so much more value in these meetings when you're trying to brainstorm and you can't necessarily like describe well what you're trying to say so i mean i bought my own laptop with my own money but uh like how great would it be if your like company gives you a laptop and an ipad and an apple pen just so like you could really leverage it in these ways Ways, like brainstorm ideas take notes take notes and do whiteboarding share your screen like much easier like that would be fantastic and this is also why in the past i actually didn't bring this as an ipad to the office as as often because i didn't feel safe not in the sense of it's gonna get stolen but i i was really worried that i was gonna drop this i mean i still do but you know like everything goes like <laughs> after a year i feel a little bit more casual with it now you know meaning like i'm not as worried about dropping it every second a little bit more casual to a point where sometimes i do bong this to the walls and things like that which is not good but like i guess that have helped me to like just bring this baby with me in more places like the office so that i could really really fully leverage it okay so those are like the four things that i still use religiously um you know surprisingly though i don't really use the ipad for social media as often as i thought i would like tiktok like i actually i do have tiktok on ipad but and i and i and i do use tiktok a lot like on my phone i just feel like maybe because like it's just such a big canvas for tiktok because i actually don't think you could do split screen in tiktok i have to confirm that but i have tried it usually like the whole night 12.9 inch for tiktok that i think it's just a little bit much and i actually prefer not to to do social media things because i could spend like hours on tiktok and i don't really want to do that on the ipad and i don't want to get used to doing that on the ipod and ipad because i want to associate ipad for the most part to be like creative and productive so i try to kind of remove certain habits to get stuck with certain devices so when i touch a certain device i will feel the energy that i usually feel when when I touch that device does that make sense like when I touch my laptop I feel like drained and sad <laughs> because like I work a lot on my laptop that's when where I do like bunch of heavy heavy work on my laptop you know I don't do that here and I'll get into what I end up not doing in my iPad that I thought I would in a second but that's my laptop so whenever I touch it I do have a certain feeling associated with it like when I have to open my work laptop on the weekend like it drains me a little bit you know like it makes me not happy but like the association that i have when i touch my ipad it's like a vacation you know it's like it's a weekend 
that's how I feel. It's like it's creative time. It's it's planning time. It's happy time. Like that is actually what I associate my iPad with, which is great. And then my phone is just casual, like everything on the go all the time. Keep me not bored, you know, all of that good stuff. So four of those, like those four things that I use it daily, super worth it. No regrets whatsoever, period. Now let's get into like, what are some things that I thought I would use it more for initially when I first bought it and realized I didn't actually really end up using that at all or much at all in the last year. I would say first thing is anything that has to do with heavy typing. I kind of show you in my year ago video review on this iPad that yes, like you could connect to a keyboard and yes, that is still true. You could connect it to any wireless keyboard but actually really seamlessly and it works great. And you could like put your iPad up and then you could just type kind of like a little mini laptop but like I ended up pretty much never really doing that and when I do type anything I use this thing or I have my lap my iPad in an angle like this where then I would just type like this and this is like still a very comfortable position to type in because it's slanted like this so I do most of my typing like search for certain furniture <laughs> or like anything on Google search for example or like any search within the website that I need to search any item more precisely that I do need to actually type. I just type on the iPad is what I'm trying to say. Like I don't actually end up using an actual wireless keyboard to connect to or anything like that. So that's one thing. And I actually find if you do need to type really heavily on something that you're doing, you're trying to do it on the iPad. I mean, you can. Me personally, I just feel that when I know I need to type a ton or like an email or like really thought out document, I would draw out and outline like what I'm supposed to write or what are the key points for this important email, but I won't actually physically type that out here. I just find using the laptop for that much, much easier. So for those I use my laptop for, for like heavy typing. For iPad, I usually use it for writing and scrolling and stuff that's easy for my hand. The second thing that I don't really use the iPad for that I thought initially I would which I touch up on earlier which is like social media I thought because I am you know crazy on social media too I could spend three hours easily on like TikTok or like hours on Pinterest and all of that stuff I thought I would be using my iPad a lot more for those type of like social media uses and I don't except for Pinterest like I said I don't really spend that much time on like TikTok here or even like other social media period like I use that from my phone usually if social media specifically but that was a surprise for me because even that I do use social media a lot on my phone I just thought I would translate that into the iPad even initially I didn't really want to like I said want to separate the the feelings that I have with the iPad but sometimes you know you give in but I actually never really did and and never actually felt the need to give in because iPad is just naturally I kind of lean towards it for certain things versus for my phone and laptop I naturally like lean towards those for other things so those were the, like kind of the things that I thought I would use more of but didn't end up using as much and it's like totally totally fine which is really like heavy typing stuff or like building crazy slides like i i don't end up using those from the ipad okay but like what are my like overall thoughts i mean overall as you could tell i'm still super super happy with the ipad 12.9 i don't regret it at all like have i ever thought about man i maybe should have gotten like the smaller one like the 11 inch no like i don't if anything it's never instead if anything i just maybe have thought about buying an extra, you know, extra, extra iPad mini or something like that for something that's like super, super convenient. Like that's it. But yeah, I love the feeling of the iPad feeling like when I touch it, I feel like I'm on a vacation, things like that. Love those. The feeling that it makes me feel like I could like conquer the world because I do really plan everything here. It's great. Um, like strategy planning, you know, being creative, like the feeling that it gives me, like when I have my iPad, I just know like I could conquer the world, meaning that I know I could get it done because I could organize my thoughts a lot better and easier. And 
and communicate like really key points because and by the way like even doing this video like I wrote down a bunch of things you know that oh like how I feel what I'm gonna say you know in the sense of like where are the key points so again like I legitimately use this for like so many things beyond just one or two things so that I really really love and this is not to say that I would I'm good with using just the iPad because like I said I use mainly like three devices right my phone my laptop um, my camera is about to heat up so I need to end this video but like I hope this updated review helps you to get to know more about the iPad overall but yeah I'll see you next time bye